today we will discuss uh, 12 programmatic advertising questions for interview and programmatic advertising professionals it is a part 3 of the series of the programmatic advertising questions which i have been discussing so far so in this part let's discuss the 12 more important questions of programmatic advertising which may help you during your interviews in various agtech companies and uh, also it will be a knowledge refresher for you if you are a programmatic advertising uh, professional so let's start with the first question of the series so first question is that uh, what tools can you use to test a tag or the ad unit tag which is made so this question can have different meanings on the basis of your interpretations so generally testing a tag here means that the tag will display ads of same size in which it was created it will display an image in place of tag during testing tags are working properly or created or not can be tested by a js bin uh, the url you can use this url js bin.com html output test a tag or you can use just a tag.com Another way you can test a tag is Google is that using dev tools the most manual way to test your gtm implementation is to uh, go to the network tab in your browser's uh, developer tool and find the container and vendor tags this is how you would locate the tag in dev tools open your browser's developer tools go to the network tab take the action that would trigger your tag such as clicking a button or loading the page finding the network request that should result from the action by filtering the list and searching for google or the other tag vendor's name if you can't find a tag you have to go back to the gtm google tag manager and check your triggering rules you can also use the console tab in your dev tools to inspect the data layer object second question is what will be what if the third party tags don't have macros in it will dbm count any operation there can be major discrepancies in counting of operations in the absence of third party macro and operations and uh, counting may also not happen it is suggested to implement and cross check implementation of click macros properly before starting any campaign which may lead to non counting of impressions and clicks what creative and formats are available in dv360 the type of creatives which are available in dv360 are the first is 3d swirl swirl is an immersive display format with an interactive 3d model which gives your audience complete control as they rotate the model or <coughs> play a 3d animation if interested they can expand the ad to full screen to see more second one is flipbook flipbook in is, is an outstream video format for mobile web use your existing video assets in a novel playful way when when someone scrolls down the page a short video clip at the same place as they are scrolling when they stop scrolling the video stops if they scroll up the video plays in reverse the video clip that plays on a scroll is very short usually dynamic 1 to 5 second clip you choose from your longer video people can clip uh, click the video clip to play the full video with sound and video controls third one is native video native ads are proven to be a better user experience because they fit the look and feel of the publisher's page resulting in increased engagement and higher visibility native video ads help you go to the market quicker because they use a set bundle of assets that publishers use to fill their native ad templates just upload your assets and a video to increase your reach across premium display inventory including google outstream video fourth one is parallelix parallelix is built in component in google web designer that makes it easy to create a visually distinctive layered screen that animates into view on a scroll two google web designer templates are available to demonstrate different approaches for using parallelix to build your brand parallelix window and parallelix reveal app install fifth one the app install format helps you quickly create a mobile banner and social ad to drive app downloads using the images and details about your app from the google play store or apple store just select the app to promote add a headline and description and your ad is ready to go app install with video the app install format helps you quickly create a mobile and social ad to drive app downloads using the images and details about your app from the google play store or apple app store just select the app to promote add a youtube video headline and description and your ad is ready to go then you have audio ads expand the reach of your campaign by including audio ads for digital radio to to secure premium audio inventory you can run programmatic guaranteed private auction or preferred deals with publishers such as soundcloud spotify or google play music you can also add audio line items to any insertion order for open auction buys 
एट दिस क्यू कार्ड क्यू कार्ड इज ए फ्लेक्सीबल ले आउट विद रूम फॉर योर लोगो बैकग्राउंड इमेज एंड थ्री फ्रेम्स ऑफ एड कॉपी वी आर स्वाइप वर्टिकली टू सी द नेक्स्ट फ्रेम ऑफ कॉन्टेंट डेटा ड्रिवेंट क्रिएटिव मेक्स इट ईजी क्रिएट हाई क्वालिटी ब्रांड अवेयरनेस मैसेजेस टेलर टू ईच ऑडियंस नेटिव ऐप इंस्टॉल नेटिव एड्स आर प्रूवन टू बी अ बेटर यूजर एक्सपीरियंस बिकॉज दे फिट द लुक एंड फील ऑफ द पब्लिशर्स पेज रिजल्टिंग इन इंक्रीज एंगेजमेंट एंड हायर विजिबिलिटी नेटिव ऐप इंस्टॉल ads help you to go to the market quicker because this they have set bundle of assets that publishers use to fill their native ad templates just upload titles and promote your app across premium display inventory native display native ads are proven to be a better use because they fit uh, fit the look and feel of the page resulting in increase engagement higher and uh, this is the same way that native ads can help you to go to the market quicker and Uh, you just have to upload the assets and you are done and youtube bumper ad bumper ads are 6 second mobile first non escapable in stream ads bought on cpm via adverts they are designed to drive awareness and reach in a mobile first world advertisers are challenged to catch the attention of their audience on a small screens bumper ads are a snackable format perfect for on the go viewers reinforce your brand image message when paired with true view or google preferred ads YouTube Discovery Ad a true view discovery ads connect your brand with consumers that choose to initiate your ad your ad consists of a thumbnail image from your video with an ad headline and description while the exact size and appearance of the ad may vary depending on where it appears true view discovery ads always invite people to click to watch the video you will be charged only when viewers choose to watch your ad by clicking the thumbnail the video then plays on the YouTube watch page on on your channel page and this will increment the view count Use this format to promote a video in places of discovery, including next to release YouTube videos, as a part of YouTube search results, YouTube homepage, or alongside other content across partner sites. YouTube True View in Stream Ad. True View in Stream Ads enable advertisers to reach users while they engage with videos across YouTube and Google Display Network. Advertisers only pay when a user use user. Uh, chooses not to skip their ads because users are given the option to skip the ad if you will also increment the youtube video view count true view ads build brand awareness with guaranteed reach and viewability on youtube across the screens use this format when you have video content you would like to promote before other videos on youtube and across the google display network true view for shopping is the last <laughs> format that is true view for shopping is a simple and effective way to add product details and shopping links to your video content by clicking Uh, linking to your Google Merchant Center feed with relevant products featured in the companion banner of a true view in stream ad it's easier than ever for people to promote to browse and consider purchasing products related to video they are watching use this format when you want to make it easy for users to browse and purchase your product product offering while watching your video so overall there are 14 uh, uh, primary uh, video formats uh, or in uh, creative formats in dv360 common targeting capabilities in dv360 so common targeting capability of dv360 are demographics demographic one of the broadest ways of targeting available in display and video 360 simply uh, choose which groups which the predefined predefined categories you want to target gender age parental status and household income geography is the second one there, there are two types of location based targeting available in dv360 that is regional targeting and proximity targeting regional targeting allows advertisers to target individuals within a certain area such as post code or city this is a useful targeting option for brands who know users in certain locations have a higher conversion rate or are trying to raise brand awareness in certain places proximity targeting allows businesses to target users who are in close proximity to a point of interest for example anyone who is within a certain distance to any of their physical stores third one is affinity audience this type of targeting targets user by their interest and is a good way of reaching individuals who are more likely to have a strong interest in your product than the rest of the population you can combine multiple interests to narrow down a more specific audience for example an eco friendly makeup brand may want to target women who love makeup and are passionate about environment as they are likely to be interested in this type of brand fourth one is in market audiences in market audiences target users who are in the market to buy and are currently researching products similar to yours in marketing targeting is a great way of getting your brand in front of people who are actively looking to buy but may not have considered your brand as a viable option display and video 360 has its own in market audiences available to use fifth question is what is gdpr so under google's updated eu use 
user consent policy publishers must make certain disclosures to your users in the european economic area and the uk and obtain their consent for the use of cookies or other local storage where legally required and for the collection sharing and uses of personal data for ads personalization this policy reflects the requirements of the eu e privacy directive and the general data protection regulation this is the full form of gdpr the european general data protection regulation also known as data privacy and protection law has changed how website owners have to handle their users information and data Sixth question: What is ads.txt? So ads.txt stands for Authorized Digital Sellers, or ads.txt is an IAB Tech Lab initiative that helps ensure that your digital ad inventory is only sold through sellers such as AdSense, who you have identified as authorized. Creating your own ads.txt file gives you more control over who is allowed to sell ads on your site, and helps prevent counterfeit inventories from being presented to advertisers. it can help buyers identify counterfeit inventory and helps you receive more advertiser spend that might have otherwise gone towards that counterfeit inventory if you use ads.txt you must include your publisher id in your ads.txt file if there's an ads.txt file present on your site and your publisher id is missing from it google will reject all ad requests from your site Seventh question is what is DMP? So DMP is a data management platform. It is a unifying platform to collect, organize, and activate first, second, and third-party audience data from any source, including online, offline, mobile, and beyond. It is the backbone of data-driven marketing and allows businesses to gain unique insights into their customers. While big data is instrumental to effective data-driven marketing campaigns, you can't do much with the raw information. You need it sorted and converted into a usable form. That is, converting the unstructured data into structured data, so that it is usable and utilized. At least, so you can understand what you are looking at. This is the power of DMP. What does a DMP do? A DMP collects And organizes data from vari- a variety of first, second, and third-party data sources, and makes it available to other platforms such as DSPs, SSPs, and ad exchanges to be used for targeted advertising, personalization, content customization, and beyond. Some people describe a data management platform as the pipes of ad tech, connecting many platforms in a neutral way, so marketers can use their powerful audience data when and where they want. How does DMP work? A DMP can collect unst- unstructured audience data from any source, including desktop, mobile web, mobile app, web analytics tools, CRM, point of sale, social, online video, offline, and even TV. A true DMP should collect audience data on a more than a surface level, going far beyond things like URL and keyword information. The first-party data, that is the data you own and have collected directly from your own customers, can be collected. based on specific behaviors such as clicks downloads video uploads or video com- completions interests like sports football parenting museums and travel or demographic information it can also include demographic data socio economic data influential and action data as an as an example a business can use a dmp to collect and organize data then use that data to target a particular ad to a mom who are 25 to 35 there are endless applications of dmp Data management platform collects audience data from various online and offline sources such as web analytics tools, mobile web, mobile apps, behavioral and demographic data, CRM data, that is customer relations management data, and then you have point of sale data and social networks. The next question is what are MMPs? So MMPs are a mobile measurement partner. Mobile MMP is a company that helps apps measure campaign performance across advertising, marketing channels, media sources and ad networks. A mobile measurement partner is a platform provider that attributes, collects and organizes app data to deliver a uniform assessment of campaign performance metrics. Drawing an analogy from sports, an MMP acts as a trusted and impartial referee to rule on attribution. It is a mission-critical component in a mobile marketer's tech stack. Being the only party with an unbiased view of the entire consumer journey, an MMP enables marketers to understand which media source is upgraded for driving a conversion. This empowers marketers to make informed decisions regarding budget allocation. 
how does mmp work in basic terms an mmp matches campaign engagement with installs and post install in apptions this is done using a combination of device ids for user level attribution probabilistic modeling or sk add network in ios 14 for deterministic aggregate level attribution by implementing a sdk or the software development kit which is a piece of code that collects measurement and attribution data the app enables the mmp to associate ad engagement with app installs and in app events such as game game levels registrations completed in a fintech app places purchase placed purchases etc what are the benefits of working with an mmp improve app performance return ros and ltv an mmp equips you with accurate and granular data enables you to allocate your budgets and optimize your app performance ros and ltv scale marketing efforts as you scale campaigns across several ad networks all the tools you need to try out new networks are already set up use budget more effectively an impartial mmp can connect all the dots in your campaign and pinpoint exactly where credit is due this means you can allocate your budget into the campaigns that bring the most value save time and resources let a universal sdk do the grand work measure and attribute all your ad network through a single sdk plus you can save heaps of time analyzing countless dashboards and spreadsheets single dashboard see one view consolidating all your raw data and aggregated data for both paid media sources and organic activities so that's all